we lost a lot of the good light waiting for um, some peaceful quiet time to do the video but um, what I'm here today about is what may be a foreign concept to a lot of preppers to a lot of homesteaders um, having traveled the world I've found a lot of things around the world and food's kind of important to me um, one of the things living on a homestead you're going to have a lot of the same foods over and over given limitations in your garden size your your local um, environment and the agricultural um, products that are available where you live at least as far as home growth is concerned and home canning um, there's a lot of things you can do I've got some articles out and I'm going to put some videos out with some side dishes and some recipes and some things you can do to spice up your meals um, what I want to talk about today is primarily a foreign concept, meaning shopping in the foreign markets. A lot of people don't really think about this, and I never really did until I happened to return to the States for a while, and I was looking for a particular dish and couldn't find it, and I went into one of the foreign markets, and one of the things I noticed, um, a lot of the pricing, while a lot more than it was in developing nations and third world countries, was still substantially better than I could get it in the in the regular stores. Um, a lot of that is directly due to influence from government subsidies, taxpayer subsidies funded through the government. Um, but, okay, I've got a few examples here. One is sea salt. Um, we've got it in a container. We pay 8 pesos a kilo for sea salt. Um, that's about 15, 20 cents for a kilogram, 2 pounds, 2.2 pounds of sea salt. Um, the sea salt is not nearly as bad for you as the iodized salt. Um, the iodized salt is still going to be cheaper, but um, for health benefits, for cooking, for your sugar cures, your salt cures, curing meat from fresh pills, um, curing hams, curing deer, um, any meat you're going to hang and smoke or cure first. Um, the rock salt works a lot better for a lot of the home cooking, home recipes. Soy sauce. I'm going to show you how to use soy sauce. One liter bottles. They cost under a dollar here. Um, the last time I bought one in the U.S., they actually came in pairs. It was a one liter bottle of the vinegar, a one liter bottle of soy sauce, and they cost under a dollar. Um, in the grocery store, you get the little Tabasco sized bottle of soy sauce, and that's going to cost you about two, two and a half bucks. Um, I realize a lot of people don't use soy sauce just regular, but I'll show you some tricks around that too. Brown sugar. Again, not nearly as unhealthy as the white sugar, but super expensive in the U.S. Here, we pay under a dollar a kilo. That's 50 cents a pound. Um, about the same as the salt or the rice, but it's a lot cheaper than the processed sugar, and again, a lot healthier for you. Um, it's great for a whole lot of things. And then, what else do I have here? One of the things, I love my iron skillets. I love my iron skillets. I really, really do. But one of the things I discovered in the Philippines was called a koali. Okay, this is pressed aluminum. It's spun and pressed. I don't really know how to explain the machining process, but um, it's formed. But it's almost an eighth of an inch thick, and it is substantially cheaper, substantially easier to maintain, and just every bit as good for cooking is the cast iron. Um, it generally comes in the kawali, which you just saw, or the rice cooker or caldero. Um, and again, those are very thick, very heavy. You can dry fry in them without risk of burning, um, burning the bottom of the pan and rendering the pan useless. You don't have to re-season them. Um, they're super easy to clean. And there's you know, um, they're, they're just, I, I actually took a set back with me from the Philippines to use on my homestead in the, in the U.S., up in northern Nevada. 
and they served me well until the day we left so um in fact i still have one of them here now that i'm back in the philippines um another thing that you can look at is bulk purchases now you can go to places like costco and they sell in bulk but last time i was there every time i've been there everything i wanted everything i was looking at they sold it in bulk but the prices were still the same. You weren't getting any discount for purchasing in fall. Um, in the farm markets, things like rice, um, you can buy in bulk. And they're substantially cheaper than you're going to be paying in the American stores. Um, so, you know, I mean, a 25-pound bag of rice may sound excessive to some people. But, in fact, when you're living off the grid, if you've got a family of four... That's not going to last you maybe four, six months. Um, it, you know, it's not really as outrageous as it seems. Um, plus, if you if you uh, see my articles about long-term food storage, it can be easily stored and it will last for years. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits when you go in the stores. Um, if you go in the Asian markets, you're probably going to have to get used to the fish. There's a lot of fish there, so it might smell a little awkward to you at first. Just deal with it. Um, don't be afraid to try things out. You've got, you've got a whole different variety for the, the new generation. The ramen noodles are, well, even, even when I was a kid, the ramen noodles that were relatively new were cheap. And you can find all sorts of different varieties in the Asian stores that you'll never be able to find in the U.S. Um, otherwise, you'll be able to find different varieties of chili. Um, one of my personal favorites in the Latino stores is the Chili Chipotle. Not to be confused with the restaurant. They've been around a lot longer than the restaurant ever was. But they're hickory smoked jalapenos in, um, or no, they're, I'm sorry, they're hickory smoked habaneros in the, in the, in a tomato paste so you have this really really amazing incredible flavor and at the same time really really spicy which i love so um don't be afraid to shop around when you're in there don't be afraid to look don't be afraid to ask questions most of the people there um, are not going to be militant nationalists and you know just demanding that you speak a hundred different languages just to shop in their stores it's really not going to work that way so when you're out and about and you happen to see that Me mexican market or you happen to see that asian market you really really might want to stop in even if it does seem kind of like a foreign concept to you so like and subscribe and i hope you come back for the next video thank you